Yeah, the title of the article is Watchmen creator Alan Moore. Adults loving superhero movies is infantile and can, and can be a precursor to fascism. Wow. Uh, which that's, in itself, uh, that title is just that's a statement there. Striking. It's like, wow. Okay. So not only are you calling superhero movies infantile, but you're also saying that it's going to make you be come fascist. Um, I'm just going to read the first couple uh, paragraphs here. Watchmen creator Alan Moore's hatred for superhero movies is well known as he once called them a blight to cinema and also to culture to a degree. But he dragged them even more during a recent interview with The Guardian. Moore described adults' continued love of superhero movies as an infantilization the act that can act as a precursor to fascism. I said around 2011 that I thought that it had serious and worrying implications for the future of millions of adults were queuing up to see Batman movies, Moore said, because that kind of infantilization, that urge towards simpler times, simpler realities, that can very often be a precursor to fascism. Um, he goes on to wow. express that, you know, he does take responsibility for some of his own actions in this because he's kind yeah. of the guy who he made did. comics for adults back in the right. 80s with Watchmen, um, with V for Vendetta. You know, he's done a lot of, he, he's, he's been a part of this, you know. But he, the thing that's confusing about it is he talks about how these characters became more grown up in the eighties, but they still were for kids just because they were more grown up stories. Doesn't mean they were suddenly for adults. And that's where I think he is uh, very much in the wrong because I think they were trying to reach a broader demographic. They ended up coming out with a rating system for comics, I think in the nineties because of the vast difference in the content within a lot of these books and some of the stuff, especially with Watchmen and V for Vendetta, you shouldn't be marketing that towards 12 year old boys. Right? Some of that stuff is like, very disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. Not all superhero uh, comics. And I know movies in particular, I mean, I can name off just a few movies like Logan, you know, Deadpool, even the dark Knight to a large extent is not a kid's movie uh, with some of the themes and imagery in, in the, in that movie. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, superhero movies are definitely not just not they, they they should not just be for kids. I I think I mentioned this before, you know, a good movie is one that appeals to a wide range of audiences, not just a single group of people, you know. Mm -hmm. I just man, it's <laughs> So I mean, so the I, thing is, I feel like he's wrong, but he's also right in some ways, you know, cuz comics and superhero movies aren't for kids. They haven't been for like my whole life. You know, 40 nearly 40 years now there've been some adult version of stuff, but I do realize that there yeah. is a degree of immaturity within geek culture, you oh, know? Yeah. Um, and, but the thing I'm trying to wrap my head around is how he leads to fascism. And that's probably maybe yeah. in the other article, which I haven't had time to fully read, but okay. like, I, I don't get what he's saying just, there. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, what I, I don't, I'm, <laughs> Is it yeah, because I don't know where the want a hero? Is. is it the idea that they're looking for a hero or a savior? That's what makes them um, more um, susceptible to fascism, or is it, or is he equating like Trumpism to people who read comic books? Yeah, you know, or is it I'm a little not bit sure. Also, is is he ahead. alluding to the white? Is he alluding to a lot of the white casting and a lot of early superhero movies? You know, a lot of the white. Even in Marvel movies, they were everyone was white essentially up until uh, what Black Panther. Um, there weren't a whole lot of black black characters going on in the Marvel canon, or really many superhero movies in general. Um, I'm not, maybe uh, yeah, I mean there was that. War Machine; he was black, but um, right. and Falcon was black. Um, the key thing was they were kind of cut out of the Avengers movies, like so mm -hmm. they had black okay. characters that they had introduced, they but then when they had the Avengers movies, the side character didn't show up in the Avengers movie. And that, yeah. that was definitely pointed out during um, Avengers two age of Ultron was the fact that, okay, so you have war machine. War machine was in age of Ultron, like towards the end, I think. Right. 
Because I know know he was at the party. It's a lot, honestly. But it wasn't like he was part of the Avengers. It was like this weird... I remember it being pointed out that's like, okay, so War Machine existed for the first Avengers movie, but he wasn't in it for some reason. He was definitely in the second one, but it, it was... It was really weird what they did with him because he was kind of like not really part of it for some reason. Like he was there, but then he wasn't, you know? Um, right. Yeah. Because I remember the party scene where he and Rhodey, uh, where Rhodey and uh, Tony are trying to lift the hammer and they have both of their um, mm-hmm. gloves on, yes. both of their um, Iron Man and right. War Machine gloves on. They're trying to use the that to lift the hammer. So I, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going to have to rewatch that. That one's so yeah. old. I keep hearing people saying yeah. that the movie's better than we remember it as too. Cause I know it came out in a time where we were just like inundated with the superhero movies. So it kind of gets glossed over. Right. Um, especially if you yeah, were following been, like, what, all 20... the TV shows. Oh, it was like 2015. Yeah. yeah. I was say, it, 2014 it, or it was in a time with all the different TV shows that were coming out that were kind of connected, but weren't connected, you know, and the one that was connected was supposed to be agents of shield, but they kept doing things that made it so that that wasn't connected. You know, like the movies were like, they'd have an episode where they're cleaning up after like Thor, the dark world, but then Mm -hmm. agent Smith doesn't, isn't on the helicarrier to rescue them at the end of age of Ultron, which he really should have been, Mm -hmm. you know? So it was like this weird, thing that they did there where it was like it's connected but it's not but yeah so I, i'm not sure if the point he's trying to make about fascism actually makes sense um, no I, I i don't think it does because fascism to me just means to me it means that you're you're ruling like you're, you're ruling through force that's fascism you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you don't allow freedom of speech. You don't allow people to have their own opinions. And I just find it interesting because it's kind of like, and you put the state first because to me, like he's all communistic and all like wears hammer and sickle shirts and stuff like that. And, <laughs> and it's like, to me, like fascism kind of goes hand in hand with that whole thing, which I, I know they're different. I know communism and fascism and all that is different but i honestly don't feel like they really are as different as they want them to be you know yeah right so um i feel like you could be a communist and a fascist at the same time just like you can be a socialist and a fascist and and be uh you can't but you can't be a freedom-loving person and be fascist at the same time 